thank you so much mehna for for joining on this podcast uh, it's really a pleasure to have you have you here thank you sumit thank you for having me here great uh, so i've been uh, i've been quite familiar with your work thanks to linkedin it's really i mean great to see that you sharing like different opportunities in the development sector for students and for people who are in the sector so maybe do you want to kind of you know talk about the work that you have been doing uh, in in know the social sector sort of space yeah thank you sumit uh, for the introduction uh, so like you said uh, i mean through linkedin we have been sharing it's almost uh, today if you see we have done uh, almost 122 weeks of uh, job posting every week and this started uh, this is something that uh, we started in fab 2021 where there were so many job loss in social sector while in the uh, in the other sectors also even in the for profit ecosystem also good uh, thing that happened is uh, i had a good network from the azim bim university and the sector leaders and we used to have the conversations and this conversation one thing that came out was uh, organization are struggling to get the right kind while at the same time there were news there were uh, so many things there are people that are sharing over linkedin that they are open to work so there were people who are not finding the right opportunity there are organization who are not finding a good fit and that's where we thought maybe if something that we as an individual can contribute so we started sharing to a hashtag so that people can come in hrs can reach out and then that's where also sharing uh, job opportunity with the organization which are very limited visibility because there is uh, for uh, ngo ecosystem you see there's before and after before covid if you see ngo ecosystem was not that tech tech savvy and now you see everyone is on uh, have the digital visibility so that's that led us start you know the social sector and then sharing job posting and then we started having conversation with youth got to know that uh, there are organization which are hiring but that use different terminology so we started having conversation with the uh, ceos of not for profit just to bring them uh, on on conversation and then having brief 10 minute conversation on what they do how do they impact how do they hire what skill set they need and then based on their experience in the ecosystem what is something that they advise to youth and this conversation very helpful uh, uh that we used to drive on uh, youtube uh, every alternate weeks yeah thank you so talking about uh, like the overall landscape you know so and and as you rightly mentioned like the csr space and the social sector space itself has kind of evolved you know from pre covid to like post covid and also like before that like few years before that there has also been change in you know the csr act kind of came in and a lot of resources started to kind of be available for the social sector which was not the case you know before before the csr act so could you sort of give like as an overview of the current landscape of the social sector i mean you see uh, if uh, we speak about the trends there are four things that i see four thematic areas that we see is the one uh, there's so much uh, opportunities and then there is so much focus on education and skilling ecosystem there's so much focus that recently started training is on climate and green jobs and then public policy and public health is another domain while i see these four are the trending uh, the others areas are also equally important and uh, there are equal opportunities among those thematic areas also but while there's a larger ecosystem that is talking about uh, education skilling climate and public health so that's uh, the general trend and then there are hiring so to start it and then hiring happening across all these thematic areas so when i switched over you know to the development sector so i used to be a journalist uh, with uh, like with the times of india and mumbai worked there for 5 years to realize that's not something that i wanted to do you know um, so when i was going to take a break this is way back in 2011 okay uh, i took a break to do my masters in development studies at university of sussex in uk so when i was quitting my job and you know trying to you know go back to books to be able to get into the social sector i was absolutely i had no clarity as such i knew that i wanted to work in the sector but i had so many questions you know 
uh, in terms of what are the kind of paths that are available, what are the kind of opportunities uh, that are there in the sector. If I kind of look at it now, I mean, wanted to understand, I'm sure like this is a question that a lot of youngsters would have at this point in time, you know, in terms of what are the kind of opportunities that are available in the social sector. So maybe if you could talk a bit about that. If we look at opportunities in social sector, uh, one definitely there's a defined career path is people doing uh, bachelors and then go for fellowship. And then if they uh, don't intend to go for fellowship, then there are masters like now in India also there are universities and IITs of uh, development studies, uh, social work, human resources, and so many like institute like this APU. Now, uh, one year program also started in ISTM, ISPP, and then and so many good uh, institutions started. So in, in today's time, I mean, there are a lot of people who may be working in, in a specific sector who may not necessarily be in the social sector, but they want to switch over to, to you know, this space and not necessarily someone wants to spend time maybe, you know, taking a break and getting back to academics and maybe spending a year or two. So in such cases, like what are the kind of opportunities which are which are available? Uh, if you look at the uh, social sector 10 years before, it was mostly, if I name uh, the or quote that word, chola I mean, you will be going village to village, door to door, or maybe in the field and doing that stuff. Now, social impact is a profession. So the skill set, like I'm just taking an example now, if you're getting into data, you need to have skills which are relevant to data plus how do you communicate, how do you say those stories, how do you people understand those things. So the skill set is important plus if you're switching from uh, corporate to social sector, one thing if I say is the empathy because uh, here things won't uh, be that much quicker or, or maybe business oriented but uh, things will be here mostly around impact and people uh, oriented. And, and it's, it's easy uh, to get into the social sector if you have the right skill, interest and empathy uh, uh, around around issues. So while actually talking, you raised a very important uh, aspect, which is, uh, you know, when people are planning to switch from other sectors. So first of all, I mean, like a very fundamental question, does the sector pay enough for to attract, you know, talent from other sectors? Uh, one you still see the traditional way where not for profit is not focused on money, is focused on uh, people and then working in villages where maybe the living cost is very low. Uh, and then those kind of organization in one set where they are more uh, maybe locally driven organization, then there are consulting them for profit, then uh, good organization which has the standard bar of pay. So you can opt uh, for the segment which works better for you. If you are here for impact plus money, uh, consulting or maybe spaces like public policy could be good. Uh, climate is also a good space. I see friends who are uh, starting salary uh, in, in the sector is on an average. And these are from the interaction that we're having on all the social sector, uh, uh, 30 to 40,000 for an associate position. Uh, and I think that's similar. I mean, if you look at uh, five, six years before, and I'm not sure about the current trends in the corporates, but that's what something that this uh, uh, Bangalore Silicon uh, companies were paying to engineers. Then if you're a mid uh, professional with uh, three to eight year experiences, the salary could be ranges from uh, 40 to 1 lakh or, or maybe more than, but these are again based on what thematic area you're working and uh, what is your engagement because ultimately uh, what and how you're impacting and how, uh, what skill set you're bringing. So uh, even in an organization, there could be different uh, salaries for a same uh, designation time. If you want to get into social sector, look at what impact at the end you intend to make. Because money you can make in corporates also. You are not joining the social sector uh, for money plus luxury. Uh, there are uh, burnouts in the sector. There's no fixed timing certain times. So uh, those kind of certain things like uh, time etc. won't work because things are people oriented. 
if i need to meet uh, community people uh, or or parents of a student for certain impact it won't be available in the data so those kind of scenario based on but yeah you actually also talked about you know certain skills and qualifications so i mean mm. one common thing that i faced and i have spoken to many founders and you know, people uh, like who either have their own organizations or run their own businesses mm. is it is always very difficult to find good people and even if you find them they don't stick around you know mm. uh, i don't know if it is a problem of like the younger generation uh, maybe i feel i'm i'm, I'm old now uh, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, if you could talk about, you know, typically what are the kind of skills and mm-hmm. qualification uh, that typically employers look at, you know, when they are hiring? So, uh, one, what skill set generally employers and organization look when definitely the problem solving skill, uh, digital literacy skills, communications, communication should be uh, uh good in terms of written in terms of what you speak to your stakeholders and that should also have empathy and uh, the other thing that organization recently started exploring is uh does the person align with the organization value system so they also see if the person would be a good fit in the team that they have so those kind of alignment uh, is it something that organization started looking the big mistake that uh, i'll say youth who want to get into social sector or maybe already in but in transition they do is that they apply for every so one they should clearly have look at gd understand if they would be able to do that thing because that somewhere also save the recruiters then uh, this time when there's so many switches happening and sometimes organization not hiring or or maybe uh, unable to find the right so uh, articulation around what is something that youth can offer to organization so the sense of cover letter like just not just sharing what they have done but also what they can offer plus if they already engage somewhere or not engage find a friend who can give them insights about what is and how they can articulate or find a mentor who can guide them around identifying the right organization because you can't be a good fit for every organization you need to find your interest you need to find what is your personality type are you something who run quickly get things done then you need to look for that kind of work are you something that enjoy the process or uh, then what is the skill set that you have so identify uh or or if you have friends mentors around you if you don't have get someone and help them uh, talk to them understand what is your interest area and then uh, personality type and then what skill set you have so that you can explore those kind of experiences and then maybe if you don't find someone definitely get in touch with the sector leaders write to them on linkedin 10 20 if they don't respond don't uh, lose hopes write to someone who is active Uh, and then maybe run behind them and get some i'm sure definitely samit you also might have people dropping message on to you you won't respond one time two time but if someone is dropping a message five times maybe definitely this uh, old uh, cold email cold messages that's come will definitely turn out in a good opportunity there are so many youth started posting jobs through different different hashtags etc now uh, if i can see uh, about few folks whom you can check out so i have done a recent uh, post around 10 people whom you can reach out for social sector jobs uh, and i have tagged them also and then uh, organization hr also i have tagged on linkedin uh, and these are on featured section on my profile uh, so you can follow these organization while there are websites also that started like devnet in devnet jobs it's something that most of us are following while uh, the folks like nirmalaya uh, baba yes ashima sanjana and so others started having these uh, community whatsapp community groups there are new uh, job portals to start like dev uh, info.in uh, idealist which is uh, for global not for profit are hiring in india so those kind of opportunities 
so if you had to kind of you know give advice like maybe if you could share like five tips you know for for students who want to uh, get into the social development sector like what would you say my first tip would be uh, work on your linkedin profile because now the way we are moving into more tech driven there would be uh, uh your profile or your identity digital identity would be an important thing second would be while you are in college explore and learn things uh and and build a skill each year because those uh soft skill or hard skill will help you learn certain things uh third uh learn to be polite learn to be empathetic now empathy i learned in five year uh in in post grad uh and and that actually helping uh me understand the other stakeholder so how do we build those understanding that empathy is the third thing that i see and fourth is the problem solving attitude should be there uh why problem solving because we are here in not for profit to solve a problem and while solving that problem you say ye nahi ho sakta because ये प्रॉब्लम आ रहा है वो नहीं हो रहा देन वी आर अगेन देयर शुड नॉट बी समवन हु इज स्टार्टिंग अनदर नॉट फॉर प्रॉफिट टू हेल्प अस विद दैट प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ वी आर हियर टू सॉल्व समथिंग एंड देन वी शुड डेफिनेटली हैव दैट प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग एटीट्यूड एंड द फिफ्थ एंड वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट इज द सेल्फ लर्निंग एटीट्यूड देयर आर टाइम्स व्हेन यू वुड बी वर्किंग रिमोटली अह there are times when you are working in uh, uh in in uh in on the issues which might be very new to you uh which organization also want you to give an opportunity and then that's where you need to learn so self learning is something that is very important so build the self learning uh, uh attitude over this so from my exposure i can See, these are the things that actually help me uh, learn and grow for in in this space. Um, I mean, just a just a last uh, sort of question in terms of like, have there like have you come across people who have switched over or who have joined the sector and who are like doing really well? Then maybe if if there are any sort of stories that you would want to share. So I have a uh, story of Bhavya. Uh, he was working with uh, an organization uh, in jodhpur uh sometime in 2019 and then this is this was a polytechnic office so uh, i was interacting and helping these young women explore or get into workforce and one of this uh, bright child uh, started exploring like she wanted to get into social sector while she only has a polytechnic uh, uh, diploma so that was uh, on us also like how do we give uh, opportunity to young women uh, while talking or educating for uh, women participation in the workforce uh, if i look at uh, 2019 uh, to today in june 2023 bhavya has uh, immersed as a uh, uh, good uh, human and and a resource for any organization and now uh, in the same organizations is uh, uh grown from jodhpur to jaipur to bangalore and then organization taking them to be in the head office and then there's something that happened because she had the self learning attitude so sometimes it's not uh, the your degree but the kind of exposure or the kind of uh, space that you get so for not for profits also those who are uh, listening to this podcast is give opportunity to youth and i'm sure they will do one those given the opportunity irrespective of their background just that their intention should be the right thank you thank you so much maila this is really yeah. good and uh, i think we have covered quite a bit of ground and uh, i'm sure people who are listening to this podcast and especially students uh, like they would find this really useful and something that they can kind of take home and you know work on some of the things that you have just shared so thank you for being on this podcast thank you samit and team uh, who having me here this conversation should uh, help youth and uh, do reach out over linkedin uh, to me or sanita uh, or samit if you have any questions would be happy to help you 
so stay uh, don't do subscribe and do check out this piece thank you thank you